There are few jobs in the world as precarious as football manager. In the modern game, no club ever seems to be more than three games away from a crisis, and that can make head coaches incredibly vulnerable. But even in that context, some sackings are incredibly harsh. And here are some of the worst examples. Some clubs have a reputation for having a lack of patience, and the list starts with one of the most notorious, Carlo Ancelotti, at Chelsea in 2011. Roman Abramovich and Chelsea were ruthless, but even the club privately accepted that they made a mistake in getting rid of Carlo Ancelotti. The season before, Ancelotti became the first and only manager in the club's history to win the double of the Premier League and the FA Cup, and he was loved by the players and the fans. Chelsea even scored a record-breaking 103 Premier League goals in the 2009-10 season, earning them a bit more respect than usual. So what did he do wrong? Well, apparently finishing runners-up to Manchester United in 2010-11 was too much of a failure for Abramovich to accept, and Angelotti was sacked immediately after the last game of the season at Everton, before the team had even left the stadium. Next up, a very strange tale from Italy. Nedo Sonetti, a promotion specialist, coached more than 20 teams over his career. But never did he meet a president more, quote, unspeakable than Massimo Cellino at Cagliari in 2002. One day, a letter arrived in Sonetti's post. Cellino had an issue, not with the weekend's result, but with the size of the fish that Sonetti had ordered at dinner one night. The sea bass in question weighed four kilograms. I swear it's true, Sonetti said of the letter and his dismissal. I've got nothing to say, it's all so ridiculous. Cellino used to get a kick out of messing with people, he remembered. At the end of 2011, Antoine Kumbuare was doing a pretty decent job at Paris Saint-Germain. He'd reached the Coupe de France final in the previous two seasons, winning it once, and had taken the Parisians to the top of Ligue 1 at the winter break. But a few months earlier, Qatar Sports Investments had taken over PSG. Their big-name players required a big-name manager. So the slightly gruff Kumbuare was replaced with the rather glitzier, and it must be said better, Carlo Ancelotti. However, that didn't exactly pay off immediately. Despite taking over with them leading Liga, a choppy run of results as the end of the season loomed allowed Olivier Giroud's Montpellier to pit them to the title. Now, an extraordinary tale from the English Football League. Leroy Rossini had returned to Torquay at the end of the 2006-07 season, after Keith Curl had been sacked, and with the future of the club uncertain amid takeover rumours. He hadn't even signed a contract, but after conducting his opening press conference, he got a call from the owner, Mike Bateson, who had unexpectedly received the offer he'd been demanding for his 51% stake in the club from a local consortium. The takeover was ratified three days later. Rosinia was told, thanks for your service, and Paul Buckle, who it should be noted won one promotion and came within a whisker of a second, was installed in his place. Next to Hearts of Midlothian. According to Stephen Presley, Hearts captain during that time, he was called into a room at the training ground to be told that the club had sacked George Burley. I sat there looking up at his two Manager of the Month awards on the shelf, which says it all. The club were unbeaten. They were top of the league. They were looking as likely as anyone in more than three decades to break the stranglehold of the old firm on the Scottish title. And the appointment had been a rousing success in the eyes of everyone, except owner Vladimir Romanov, who'd sacked him. Philippe Montagnier brought major silverware to Toulouse for the first time in 66 years in April 2023. A 5-1 victory over Nantes in the Coupe de France final meant European qualification was achieved in the year that followed a title-winning season in Ligue 2 and promotion. It triggered wild celebrations, and yet, despite securing a 13th place finish in Liga, in addition to that cup success, in the 2022-23 season, Montagnier was sacked in June. His replacement was his assistant, Carles Martinez Novel, who had been recruited in December 2022, after Montagnier's previous assistant had been dismissed. Now that hinted at hidden friction. The club's new American ownership favours a data-driven approach, which reportedly brought some conflict with the coach. In his end-of-season press conference, club president Damien Camoli claimed that while the club finished 13th, all the indicators showed that we could have finished 10th or 11th. But to lose, Montagnier's dismissal was about taking the next step in their project. 
After sealing the 2002-3 La Liga title, Real Madrid's players and coach Vicente del Bosque were celebrating at a restaurant near the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu. The party mood dipped midway through the night when club president Florentino Perez told Del Bosque that his contract was not being renewed due to an inability to control the players in the dressing room, despite having guided the team to two Champions Leagues in the three previous seasons. And to finish up, here are some honourable mentions. For Ernesto Valverde, who was sacked while top of the league with Barcelona in 2020. Nigel Adkins, who was sacked by Southampton in 2013 despite leading the club to Premier League promotion and having just secured an away draw with Chelsea. Claudio Ranieri, who was binned by Leicester City this season after winning the Premier League title. Quique Sanchez Flores, who was dismissed just 85 days after being reappointed by Watford in 2019. And lastly, then Crystal Palace owner Simon Jordan, sacking Trevor Francis on his birthday in 2003. Imagine that you could learn everything that you need to know about football news in 10 minutes without having to read anything. Well, that's why we made The Daily Football Briefing Show. It's a new 10-minute podcast that catches you up on all the football news, plus what's on TV that night. Published every weekday, it's The Daily Football Briefing Show. Check the link below to subscribe for free now, wherever you get your podcasts.